today on this Tuesday the 20th. Hope you guys are doing well today. Hope you're ready to learn some math. I hope that you enjoyed your nice three-day weekend. And let's go ahead and get started with announcements. What I say today, you're responsible for. So please, please listen carefully. Let me go ahead and give you a schedule for the week. Some of you might like to write this down. Some of you don't. And that's totally fine. If no one writes this down, that is totally fine. But here's the schedule for the week. On Monday today, or excuse me, Tuesday today, we're going to take notes and have homework both. On Wednesday, we're going to have notes and homework both. Now, I will teach the lesson quickly on Wednesday and give you a lot of class time to work on your homework on Wednesday. Obviously, the school rules state that I cannot make you do the homework. However, if you do Wednesday's homework completely, I will give you five bonus points on your quiz this Friday. Thursday, we're going to have notes and homework. Friday, we're going to take a quiz, and then we're going to have a pretty easy Friday. We're just going to work on the mid-chapter review um, for the rest of the class period on Friday, okay? So there's the schedule for the week. Um, hopefully, um, that gives you an idea of what we're going to be doing. All right, okay, here we go, moving on. Um, we'll have a quiz on Friday. You have nothing to turn in. Now, students in Miss Walker's class, there are a lot of papers in the black folder. Please get your papers out, okay? Please get them out. Thank you. Um, incompletes. Let's take a look at the incompletes. Uh, geometry track one. Here we go. Now, Charlie. Charlie Kim. Everything on here is due by this Friday. Everything. So, Charlie, you, um, I don't think you've taken this quiz number 10 either. I'm not sure uh, how your name got off this list. And it's my fault. Charlie, everything on here, you must turn in by Friday, okay? All right, moving on. Um, Abigail and Alicia, um, you guys must have been absent Friday quiz by today. Quiz, well, I mean, quiz as soon as possible. I don't know what to say. I mean, it was supposed to be taken last week, and I'm supposed to give you a zero. So, um, all that I can say is, um, quiz as soon as possible, okay? If it's not done by today or tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to be coming in there and finding out why, okay? All right, moving on. Charlie, you owe me this assignment. Charlie, this assignment. Now, um, this assignment here was given on Monday. Uh, Lydia, you're supposed to turn it in by last Friday, however. I know you weren't there Friday, okay? I get that. And Lydia, um, Tuesday's assignment, you're supposed to turn that in by Friday. Um, you weren't there to turn it in, so I get that. Um, Cody, you were, so it's, it's too late for you to turn that in. Now, Cody, you turned in three assignments. That was a great job, okay? But this that one there, if you'll look at the three assignments that are passed out to you, this was not one of them. Um, uh, I don't believe, okay? So, um... Uh, yes, Cody, I just checked. You turned in this one here, this one here, and this one here, okay? Um, so, Lydia, um, you can turn these in today. They were all due by Friday. If there's any problem with that, guys, I have an open mind and open heart to hear what you guys have to say, but you've got to contact me. So, Lydia, if I don't want to hear from you, I will expect these to be turned in today or whatever day you come back this week, okay? All right. Um, so please take a look at these. And of course, Charlie, everything for you is due by Friday. Everything, all right? Chapter 7 test. Alicia, Kaylee, Lydia, Madison, Abby, Levi, Charlie. You must take this test by Friday, okay, guys? You must take the test by Friday. Moving on. If you miss class, it is your job to go to this website right here. If you come into class and we're taking a test or a quiz, you will take the test or quiz, period. Okay, unless you pre-contact me. So please keep that in mind. All right, moving on. Um, and my mouse is not working. Okay, there we go. All right, today we're going to go over your test, then take notes, then work on homework. The video today is only 15 minutes long. We are going to start Chapter 8 today. The chapter is about similar, not congruent, polygons. We will be doing a lot with ratios and proportions. As always, please work hard, take good notes, and contact me if you have questions. The homework for today is page 378, 11-48, Mr. Mr. Earhart. You've gone off your rocker. It's 37 problems. Guys... 
please trust me, it is like reducing fractions, um, writing ratios. It's really, really easy. Okay? I did the entire homework video. I think it was like in 30 minutes or less, and that's with me explaining how to do every problem. Okay? So trust me, I know what I'm doing. It's reasonable. Okay? Um, the instructional video for today is ratios and proportions, so make note of that. And that's the video you're going to watch in class today. The homework help video, like usual, is Geometry Track 1, January 20th homework. Okay? Um, now, let me explain what we're going to do with your tests right now. Everybody get out your tests. Everybody. Okay? Now, I want everyone to take notes on the problems they missed. Mr. Earhart, you use it, give this to us for homework. You're right, I do. But because there's not really problems to work out on your test, I have chosen to go over it now and then have you turn that in and then start the video for today called Ratios and Proportions. Okay? So I'm going to give you about two seconds. We're in a lot of, we're in a hurry today. Get out your test. Get out the blank sheet of paper. Put the name on the blank sheet of paper and take notes on the ones you missed. When we're all done doing this, you're going to pass your test back in with the work that you just did, okay? Alright, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump right into your test, okay? Students, if I'm going too fast, just have Miss Frampton pause the video. Okay, number 12, please listen carefully. Here we go. Let me get my pen ready here, and let's uh, let's rock and roll. we got a lot to do. A, B is 5, so this whole length right here is... 5. Angle ABC is 85 degrees, so this whole angle down here is 85 degrees. AC is 8, so this diagonal right here, this whole diagonal, has a length of 8, okay? Um, AD is 5, so we have 5 up here. BC is 8. Here we go. Find the length of DC. Well, students, I told you it's an isosceles trapezoid. Now, did it look like an isosceles trapezoid? No, it did not. But I drew it that way on purpose. So you would just go by facts and not what it looked like. So in an isosceles trapezoid, the legs are congruent. So if AB is 5, then DC would also have to be 5. Okay, find the length of XY. Okay, XY, remember, you take the two bases, add them together, and divide by 2. 5 plus 8 is 13. Divided by 2 is 6.5. Find the length of BD. Well, guys, in an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals are congruent. So if this diagonal here is 8, or if this diagonal here is 8, then BD also has to be 8. All right, now, think about this, guys. Look. This bottom angle here is 85. Well, we know that base angles are congruent. So this whole angle here is also 85. Well, students, we know that when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, their consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So if this is 85, then this angle up here has to be 95, because 95 plus 85 is 180. And remember, when you have an isosceles trapezoid, the base angles are congruent, so this is 95 also. So angle BAD is 95. Angle ADC is 95 degrees, and angle ABC is 85. Please take really good notes on that. I'll pause a second while you copy all that down. Okay, moving on. Now, guys, quadrilateral ABC is a trapezoid if AB is parallel to CD. Sometimes, not always, sometimes, look, here's ABCD right here. A. C, D. A, B is parallel to C, D. Fine. There. But what if these two sides here were parallel? That's possible. Then you would not have a trapezoid. You would have a parallelogram. So sometimes when A, B is parallel to C, D, you have a trapezoid. Not always. Not always. Because it could be a parallelogram. All right. Number 14. Quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a trapezoid if its diagonals are congruent. Okay. Um, well, sometimes, sometimes, okay, look, here's a rectangle, right? And what do we know about rectangles? Their diagonals are congruent. Well, guys, a rectangle is also a what? Do you remember? Good, you read well, just kidding. It's a parallelogram. 
So, um, if the diagonals are congruent, it could be a trapezoid, but it might not be. Here's an example right here. Here's congruent diagonals. It's a rectangle, and a rectangle is a parallelogram. There's no way a parallelogram can ever be a trapezoid, because a trapezoid only has one pair of parallel sides. Only one pair. Alright, number 15. Um, the quadrilateral is isosceles if um, AB is parallel to CD. And BC is not parallel to DA. Well, sometimes it's true, it might be isosceles, but it might not be. Let me give you an example. What if it looked like this? That's a trapezoid. This side here is parallel to this side here, like it says. And this side here is not parallel to this side here, which it says. However, is that an isosceles trapezoid? No way. Not at all. So sometimes. Now, guys, this one here, not many people got this at all. Um, but this last one here was never. Never. Okay, let me show you why. A quadrilateral is a trapezoid if its opposite angles are congruent. Never. Look, guys. I'm going to draw a quadrilateral, okay? And I'm going to call this 80. So if this is 80, what does this have to be over here? 80. Now remember, guys, if it's a trapezoid, this side here has to be parallel to this side here, okay? So that means these two angles here have to be supplementary. So, this angle here has to be what? 100. And notice what it says, the opposite angles are congruent. So, if this is 100, what is this over here? 100. Well, Mr. Earhart, could that not be a trapezoid? No, guys, no. Remember what we learned? Anytime a quadrilateral has both sets of opposite angles congruent, it has to be a what? We learned this. We learned five or six ways, I forget, to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if opposite if both sets of opposite angles are congruent, both sets of opposite sides are congruent, if both sets of opposite sides are parallel, if one angle is supplementary to both of its um, consecutive angles, and I think there was one more of two lines, um, well, I'm drawing a blank, but you get the point. Anytime you have a quadrilateral and both sets of opposite angles are congruent, you automatically have a parallelogram always, and a parallelogram, parallelogram can never be a trapezoid. So no, never will the trapezoid have opposite angles congruent, never. Okay, moving on. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these, hardly no one missed these, almost everyone. By the way, the class average was a 92 on the test, it was amazingly good. Okay, here's your line of reflection. If you flip that over, it lands right on top of that reflection. This is a translation, it was moved down, then it was moved over. Translation. This is a rotation, it was rotated. Okay, so rotation. All right, moving on. Reflect the triangle and the line x equals 2. Okay, here's the line x equals 2. A lot of you missed this. Please pay attention. Take really good notes on this. There's the line x equals 2. Remember what I taught you to do, guys. You take this point here, and you go perpendicular over 2, so go over 2. Okay, this line here, go perpendicular, so 1, 2, 3, so go over 1, 2, 3. Okay, this line here, go perpendicular would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so go over 6. Six and there it is right there. That triangle there is reflected in the line x equals two. Okay, think about it. if you fold this sheet of paper right here in this red line, would not these two triangles fold right on top of each other? Sure they would, definitely. All right, number twenty-one. Okay, graph the linear equation and then reflect. Okay, let's graph this. Let's graph this really, really quick. Okay, I'm gonna put a zero in for x. I'm gonna put in a zero. One and two. Put a zero in for x, I get out three. Put a one in for x, I get out one. Put a two in for x, I get out negative one. So zero, three. One, one. Two, negative one. Okay, so there I did it. I sketched the line. There's the line that I was asked to draw. Okay. So there it says 
graph this linear equation, so I did that. Then reflect it in the line y equals x. Now, y equals x is this line here. I've told you guys this. It's 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, etc. So remember what to do. Here's your points. 1, 2, 3. Now what have I taught you to do? Remember, you um, uh, take this point here. And you draw a line perfectly perpendicular. So this point here would be one whole diagonal, then a half. So you go over half a diagonal and then a hole. And that point will reflect right there. Now this point is lying on the line of reflection, so you leave it there. This point here, once again, you draw that perpendicular line. So a diagonal and then a half and then a half and then a diagonal. There we go. So there's the three points. One, two, three that you would use. So there's the reflection right there. I'm not drawing a very good line, obviously, but you get the point, hopefully. There. Those two lines are reflected in the line y equals x. That was pretty tough. I'll admit that, okay? But that's how you would do that. All right. Moving on to number 22. Now, what is the translation vector? Guys, this is so easy. Some of you missed this. Okay, it says the figure to the left is the pre-image. That means we're starting here. Well, it's, it doesn't matter which point you use. You can use this point or this point or this point or this point. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to use this point here because I feel like it. No other reason. So I'm going to go to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because here's the point right here. So this point went over eight. That's to the right. That's a positive. Then it went down. One, two, three, four. That's negative. So negative four. Now, Mr. Earhart, would I get that same answer? No matter which point I used, sure you would. Most definitely. Watch. Let's use this point over here. This point moved to here. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I went over eight, then down four. One, two, three, four. Same thing. It doesn't matter which point you choose, okay, students? Now, on the next one, it's the opposite, okay? On the next one, we're going to take this figure, and we're going to move each point to four, all right? So I'm going to take this point here. I'm going to move it to one, two, up four, one, two, three, four. Now I'll take this point, go over two, one, two, up four, one, two, three, four. Take this point here, go over two, go up four, one, two, three, four. Take this point here, go over two, one, two, go up four, one, two, three, four. And there you go, we did it. We translated it over two. And up four, there we go. Over two, up four. Okay. So guys, really not too difficult. You just took each point, you moved it positive two, positive four, to the right, and then up. All right, this is a pretty tough one here. Let's go ahead and do it, okay? Um, not sure what points I had. I'm gonna call it A, B, and C, okay? Now I'm gonna go really fast here. So take some good notes, okay? Can I draw my string? I put my, remember I want to rotate it clockwise, I want to rotate this way, so I want it at a 45 degree angle, so you put your compass right here, put it right there in the middle, here's your compass, okay, and you want 45 degrees, well, this is 90 right here, so 45 would be about right here, so, there's the line you would draw, okay, so there's the line. Now that should make sense, guys. Now the length from P to A would be the same length I want over here for A, so about right here looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to call that a prime and now I'm going to 
that's my fault. Um, one thing I have to remember is I want the same distance from P to B to be on this line here, same distance. So it looks like to me it'd be about right here. I'm just guessing. I hope that's right. So A primed, B primed. Okay, let's go ahead and erase this here.